Hi there and welcome to another episode of Discussions of Exploration with your host Sabrina Ben Salmi. Today I'm joined with a very special guest called Stephen Blake. Stephen Blake is founder of Old Pain to Go. I am listeners, I really am excited about talking to Stephen because we had a conversation just before we recorded and he's got some impressive and very thought-provoking insights to share with you. So without further ado, Stephen, I wonder if you can introduce yourself to the listeners. Yeah, so uh, I'm Stephen Blake and I'm 67 years old and about nine years ago I was in uh, pain. I, I, I'd been in pain for 40 odd years from back problems and I found a way to get myself out of pain and I've been developing that for nine years now and uh, it got to the stage where three years ago I started teaching it to other people. And I've now got uh, 1,200 people all around the world who help other people out of pain. Wow. I'm, I'm really happy to hear the leverage, the fact that you're actually releasing people from their pain, which means they can go out and share with the world what they really need to focus on. That's amazing. Yeah. And the, the, the great thing is that we get a lot of uh, students, because uh, about 52% of the population have uh, chronic pain. Um, so we do get a lot of students who arrive with pain. Uh, but they don't have it by the time they're trained, which is just one day. Oh. So uh, we, we have all sorts of people with all sorts of problems. And, and of course, the best thing I can do for them is to help them out of pain while they're training. Because what better could it be to be somebody who helps other people out of pain? And they say, well, that can't possibly work. And they say, well, <laughs> I used to be in pain. <laughs> wow. Do you know, could you, for the purpose of the listeners, um, I wonder if you can go into what do you mean by pain? Is it physical pain? Is it emotional pain? Just kind of touch it, or is it a combination of the two? Okay. Well, I, I've trained to do both. So I, I trained to do um, uh, through NLP and hypnosis. Uh, so most of my work was with anxiety clients, and I've helped to probably six to 8,000 people now, wow. sort of lost count. And um, I helped them in one session to change their life. And because I uh, learned this uh, small technique for helping pain, it wasn't particularly good and it didn't work on everybody or it didn't work on a lot of people, uh, but it had helped me. And I refined that over these years. And then about three years ago, I read uh, an article once and it said that physical and emotional pain shared the same neural pathways. So in your head, physical pain and emotional pain are no different. So there, there isn't such a thing as it's all in your head uh, because literally pain is in your head anyway. <laughs> so although it feels like a physical manifestation, pain is literally a message that tells you to take an action. It's, it's no different to an emotion. So this is why physical and emotional pain are just the same. Because when we get a feeling, it's giving, the body's giving us the chemicals for what it expects that we need to do. And when we get pain, it gives us a level of pain that makes us take the action. So acute pain, I don't deal with acute pain. Acute pain is when you touch something hot or sharp and straight away you, you jerk away from it. Now, it's, it's not, the pain is sent from the brain down to the poor part that feels pain. But it's manufactured on the basis of this is happening, this is damaging me, what do I need to do? And it makes you do the right thing. Now, a split second later, when you've moved away from the sharp object or the hot thing, uh, you have a review of the pain because it says, well, you took the action I wanted you to because I gave you such a level of pain, but now what damage have we done? So when you look at it, it reduces the pain down to say, ah, right, nothing you need to do, or you need to go to the hospital, or you need to put a plaster on it. And it will give you the relevant amount of pain. So pain is a calculated thing in your head. But it doesn't take into, fact, uh, into account just damage. It takes how you feel about it and everything else. So if somebody accidentally, you know, if I went past you now and you were sat down and I bumped your nose with my elbow and I said oh I'm really sorry you'd go oh no it's all right Stephen it didn't hurt at all yeah but if I hit you across the, the nose with my elbow 
the same blow and I said that'll teach you mm. you would have a lot of pain there and you'd also need to hold on to the pain to remember I might come back in the room and have a go at you again so it's, it's got more to do than just damage it's the fear of the future it's about reminding you it's lots of different things so the thing I've worked on and it's called old pain to go for a reason is I'm dealing with chronic pain so I can help anybody who's been to the doctor and it's a few months later when things should have healed uh, and they're still in pain and I've dealt with pain that's been going for 59 years that somebody had and it went and, and the beauty of it is that it's it's instant because you've got a, a thing in your head running the pain message and my idea is if it's running a message and you can't do anything about it you know if you the gentleman i was thinking about he picked a cement bag up when he was 17 and he was now 76 and his message was don't pick a cement bag up again so i just got him to uh, to say i said are you going to pick up a cement bag again and he went no i said well you don't need to hold on to this pain message which has stopped you from doing it again and causing real damage and, and he's and, and this was um I, I can't can't do this all the time but that was two minutes i mean he went from being in pain to not being in pain in two minutes wow and he, he'd been in pain for 59 years of his life and, and it was just this agreement with his brain you know i'm not going to pick another cement bag up and it went i don't need to keep warning you then because it's just a message Wow, I absolutely love the way you've actually communicated that because um, my son has been diagnosed with asthma and I've got some friends that suffer from anxiety as well. And I love the fact that it's a message and it takes me back to the essence of our body language. Our body has a language of communicating with us, but because we, we're not absolutely. connected to that or understanding that, it's like, oh my God, pain is bad. So we try to push it away. We try to take painkillers. But all along, it's given us a message. And you release that man from his pain by making him understand the message and then it went away. That's remarkable. So for clients coming to you, Stephen, what does that mean in terms of being pay having pain for that length of time and it being gone? What do they say that means to them? Because that's mind-blowing. It's, um, I, I've, occasionally I manage to capture things on video. And uh, the best one we've ever captured, it's not the best one ever, but uh, it's the best one we've ever captured on video, was a woman who, she'd had fibromyalgia uh, for 30 years. I did this uh, as a free tra uh, treatment in front of uh, five trainees. And in 50 minutes, she went from being in pain to no pain at all. So um, she, as she realized it, she just cried and cried and cried. And then she kept um, saying, you don't know what this means to me. And she said it so many times that she thought she'd better explain herself. And she said, I, I keep saying that because she said, I've been in pain for so much for 30 years that I've tried to take my own life three times. Yeah, she tried to take her own life three times. And, and everybody in the room just cried. I mean, it was just, it, it's such fabulous work because for, when people go from being in pain to out of it and, and instantly, it's, it's so dramatic um, and, it, and it's so people find it so difficult to understand and, and and I'm a bit like a magician who thinks he doesn't know how to do the trick so when it works I get the same joy from everybody I help I, I, I just like oh it worked <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh I've done another one um, oh, wow and it's just so fabulous and it, it nearly brings well it does bring to tears quite often but tears of joy yeah and, and it, it's fabulous it's I, I see things that at first i think well i get to see a lot of miracles and i don't perform them because i actually help people to help themselves so anything that happens is their body doing its natural healing thing but i see some things and i think well that's a miracle and it takes me several days to think about it and work out why it worked rather than just putting it down to, you know, it's a miracle. It's one of those things. Um, it's fabulous. I just, I, I just love it. 
Absolutely. Sounds so fulfilling, to be honest. It sounds like such a sense of fulfillment that you're giving people the empowerment. I love the fact that you say to your clients that I'm empowering you to heal yourself as opposed to them thinking it's all outside of them. And I think that's real empowerment because as you go away and they go into their lives, they have to feel the sense of confidence knowing that this is about a relationship between me and my body. It's about me understanding myself again and restarting that life. Listeners, I, I really urge you to pause, rewind, listen to it again, but please take note. I love what, Stephen is sharing because he's got me thinking about a few things and I'm just yeah I, I love what you're doing especially at this time I imagine um, I've had so many conversations about different things in different contexts but there's lots of trauma right now some people are paralyzed some people are like well I'm fine I'm just keep going on like an ever ready bunny and I'm just watching all variations and I'm going it's not the now we need to be concerned with because I, I have a background similar to you in NLP and it's the, the anchors that's being set now that are going to start showing up later on. It's the aftermath. And I, I wonder if you've got anything you'd like to share around that. It's about understanding that whatever happens in our life, there's things we have no control over. And then there's, there's the only thing we have control over is us. And our thoughts, and it's our thoughts that give us all the problems. Um, I mean, since all this took off, I mean, you know, I, I'm blessed that nobody I know has come down with this terrible illness. And I've got a, a mother who's 93 who I can't visit because obviously mm. we don't want to take that risk. Um, so it's about, I've been so busy because I'm at home, but I work from home. So... I've been planning things for the future. What's going to happen? What, how can I best help people when all this is over? How can I help them now? Uh, I did put a few things out saying to people, well, why don't you train in this now? If you're something like a um, physiotherapist or a hands-on person, your work will have dried up. You, you have no income. Exactly. But if I teach you this, you'll have about 52% of your clients will have a need to be out of pain. Wow. And, and you could work on them online. So I was trying to rescue people's businesses, but um, nobody took me up on it. it it's Ooh. quite frustrating. Um, so I'm preparing things now. I've got two things planned for the future. I've got old stuff to let go. So whilst I'm teaching people the, the practical side of physical pain removal, uh, and I can do that to anybody. You, you don't have to have a, a background in anything, even though I, t I mainly teach hypnotherapists and NLP practitioners, doctors, psychologists, all those sort of people. And more recently, I've been training people like physiotherapists, uh, bone practitioners, uh, and they're using it on people to just who they've, they've never been able to help. <laughs> And suddenly, they're just one session, they're you know, walking out and never seeing them again. It's not a great business model, because you only see a person once, and, and once they're sorted, they're sorted. Because it's, it's an it's old priceless. And, I, and I love the fact that you're training the trainer, so it's not just that you're first-hand with the clients, it's also train the trainer to actually give their clients, current clients, better services and more inst instantaneous turnaround. That's remarkable. Do you know, I couldn't help but think, as I'm listening to you, with regards to, because my children are in the entrepreneurial world and personal development. So I, I definitely um, wanted to talk a bit about children and how that works with the train that you do, because I would imagine some of the people that's going to be most affected by this with adults, I find that we always have, well, not always, but we are in a position where we're somewhat more open to seeking out. We've got an issue, find someone will pay for that. But I find yeah. with children, depending on the environment they come through from, they're not always going to be aware of what it is or how to describe it and, or even who to verbalize it to. Sometimes kids don't talk to their parents. And I'm just thinking, do you train children or do you train adults to teach children? Because I imagine going forward, a lot of our children will be in some essence of anxiety, trauma, because this is a very hard time for them, being at home, missing their friends, have, like their whole world has just transformed overnight. Everything I do is, is to teach the person that's in front of me how, how life works, how their mind works, how their mind and body work together. So, so there's a few things that people don't recognise. And, and one of the simplest things, and, and, and everybody who's listening can, can latch onto this, because 
if this message got out tonight and everybody on the planet got it the planet would change by tomorrow and it's the fact that when we talk in our head anything we say in a negative is not really understood by the unconscious it actually fetches you the subject it doesn't fetch the don't bit <laughs> <laughs> Because we keep asking for, you know, I don't want a panic attack tomorrow. Um, well, what have we just shown it? We've shown it the chemicals, we've shown it everything to do with a panic attack. And then we go, and don't give me it tomorrow. Well, why did you tell me that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so a good example is if somebody says, what do you want for your birthday? And you say, um, I don't mind. Get me something you know I like, but don't get me a pen. Yeah. And, and a few months later, they go in a shop and they go, I've got to get Stephen a present. And they go, what did he ask for? Uh, or a pen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't ask for what you don't want and then not expect to get it. So we, we have to start thinking more clearly and passing that message to your unconscious. Because everything you say in a head is, is a command. If you say, I'm stupid, I'm fat, I'm... I can't balance, you know, I'm clumsy. You carry on being that because you can't prove yourself wrong. You're actually programming yourself to go forward. So instead of, I don't want a panic attack tomorrow, you just say, I want to be confident tomorrow. It, it's, it's not rocket science. Um, it's the first thing you learn in NLP and, and it's, it's so important because it's not that we don't understand uh, negatives, it's just that we put a lot of passion with things we're negative about. And we don't put the passion with things that we're positive about. Absolutely. You know, we don't strive for something that's really good. Um, we, we, we strive for things that we don't want. Very, very And true. the brain gets the wrong message and, it, and it, it's bound to give you it. It's the law of attraction on speed. <laughs> it, it's just... <laughs> It's the, like it's the that. And, and, and that's what I teach people. So when you talked about children and, and these times, I, I had the the extraordinary good luck uh, this last week that my daughter said to me um, that my grandson wanted to be hypnotised by me. Well, I rarely do hypnosis anymore. I've sort of found a shortcut for it. And um, so when, it, when she said that, he's, he's the sort of lad that is, he's autistic and he's got many uh, issues. Um, but he's always doing, he's on three things at once, three electronic gadgets at the same time. And if you switch one of them off, he goes, I was watching that. <laughs> um, so, so I've never had the chance to sit him down and try and get him some logic in there. Mm. And so he came round and I was able to do what I usually do, which is, um, I usually just tell people to close their eyes and then I just carry on talking. Um, and so I was able to put a lot of ideas in his head about how life works and how the brain works and how, and because he's autistic, he obviously takes things in as black or white. So it, it's very easy to help him reprogram himself. Yeah. Uh, and he came up with a few issues of um, being bullied and things like that. And I gave him tips of how to, deal with his own thoughts because you see if you deal with a bully for a child another one comes along later if they can learn how not to be bullied how to be confident and stand up because you won't get bullied if you stand up for yourself and you don't have to fight or do anything you don't have to you know punch the biggest lad there <laughs> it's not like that anymore it's just you don't have to take any notice of it and if you don't get a reaction, you don't get bullied. So I, I was able to give him loads of good stuff. Um, and off he went. And, and uh, you'll know a thing called the circle of excellence from NLP. And you can make it the circle of confidence. And I just did that. I gave him this magic circle that he was able to pull this ring out of his pocket that he didn't really have, throw it on the floor and step into confidence. Um, so there's, there's so many things we can do for the children. And, and, and everybody I've dealt with, even, I've I even dealt with people in their 80s with who've had anxiety all their life, and I've helped them remove it. And, and it, start, it always started off as a child. Every time. There's something happens in their early years, usually around the age of six. They have a traumatic incident. And these traumatic incidents 
aren't always anything that if you run when you look back you don't go oh that's horrendous that even they go that's so trivial now it could be abuse or something really terrible but what i found from working with thousands of people is it's not what happened to them that matters it's how they feel about what happened to them and within that the main thing was that they thought they were to blame in some way so it's very easy for me to say to a child there is no way you can be to blame for somebody abusing you it's just impossible and as an adult they get that and it's the adult brain that's still running the child program and it updates and it goes it, and, and i've had people I bet, I bet my neighbours think I sell drugs because people come here and very, people come here with their heads like this, you know, like this. Oh, Stephen, you know, I've got all these problems. And they skip down my driveway. Wow. Uh, and when they skip down their driveway, they quite often come back for five or six hugs. Because <laughs> it's sort of like, oh, I can't go without hugging you again. And off they go again. Wow. So my neighbours must go, what's that guy doing? <laughs> yeah, <too. laughs> you have to. Listening to you, it's such a gift that you're bestowing on these people's lives. I love the essence of gifting, and I really am a true believer with regards to what you shared about perception. I love the fact that it's not so much fixing, okay, I'm going to sort out the bully out there, I'm going to do all that, because you're teaching the person, it's all outside of them. It's like, what did you choose to believe as a result of this? Listeners, I really hope that you're tapping into what Stephen's sharing. It's like, start reflecting on how you show up in your own world. Like, what sort of decisions and beliefs have you come up with as a result of things that's happened in the past i, I thank you so much for sharing that um, um Stephen. i wonder if you can just go into that a little bit more well th the essence of everything i do first of all it's about simplifying everything I, I don't i don't take anything as like oh that's how it has to be so i always simplify things to well how does it work and i get it right down to the basics and one of the main things I teach everybody is always look for the cause. If you have a symptom or several symptoms, there's usually a thread running through them. It might be lack of self-worth or something like that. And once you find the cause of it and you deal with the cause of why you got like that, you don't need the symptoms anymore. The symptoms are just a manifestation of being told something. And, and it, you can see this from that there are so many manifestations of things a lot of them triggered by our own language so um, i've dealt with people who are going blind and i say what is it you uh, you know they've been going blind for three years what happened three years ago you don't want to see and a wow. woman and a woman said and, and she cried for about five minutes <laughs> and she said well three years ago i got told my husband had dementia and I cannot bear to see him suffer. I love him so much, I cannot bear to see him suffer. And I said, but that's why you're going blind. And, uh, and she said, oh, at the same time, I started going deaf. And I said, well, if you went blind, people could still tell you that he was suffering. But if you go blind and deaf, you can't be told. So you can't see it and you can't hear it. So you won't know, so you don't suffer. And, and I only caught on to it because she told me she was going blind and she said it with no emotion. And I said, how long have you been going blind for? And she said, three years. And she looked upset. So I knew something had happened three years before that was detrimental to her keeping us on. And, and literally, I've got a way of talking to the unconscious where I can get a signal back. Um, you'll know it as an idiomotor response but i get people to stand up and, and let their unconscious push them forward for a yes um so i set up this yes signal with her and i said i said to her unconscious is this about did you make a blind so she couldn't see her husband suffer and it said yes and i said are you willing do you understand now she didn't really mean that and I'm going to teach her how to deal with that, with her husband's uh, dementia. I'm going to teach her how to deal with that. Will you now release her from it? And it said yes. And a year later, she's, uh, she was 76. And a year later, her uh, eyesight hadn't deteriorated anymore. That is absolutely so, remarkable. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Stephen. Uh, no, it, it literally, uh, the main thing I teach people is looking for these stories. 
because there's always a story because you see pain should go away you break your arm it mends uh you, you get the plaster off you, you're not in pain again so when somebody comes along and says i broke my leg 10 years ago and i'm still in pain there isn't anything physical anymore but there's a protective state from the body saying oh you know perhaps if you don't run again you won't trip over and you won't break your leg again that there's people i've dealt with where it, the problem has been that they fell off a horse or they fell off a motorbike and then it gives them a problem but it doesn't tell them not to ride the horse again it just gives them back aches so it's it's not very nice to ride the horse but it's not very nice sitting down either <laughs> so it drops a hint and, and we find out what the hint is and we pass it as a message to them and say this is what it's telling you what do you want to do now for most people they say well i'm never riding a horse again and so one day i had a woman who came who was 72 and she said no i want to ride a horse again I'm not going to sit in a chair and just die. Um, and I had to talk to her unconscious and say, she's prepared to put up with the risk. She, she just said she'd rather ride a horse tomorrow and fall off it and die than not ride it again. And I don't think it's your job to stop her. Wow. Will you turn the pain off? And it went. Oh my God. <laughs> so so I, was, and I wasn't prepared for that because up until then I'd forced everybody to almost go by its command but then i realized it wasn't commanding them because it could give them something so bad only when they sat on the horse so it was dropping hints i'd rather you didn't ride the horse again so it's not for our unconscious to tell us things and make us do things so it drops hints so i've just created something in the last two weeks so very few people on the planet will ever have heard of it and it's called bilateral balance and it's my mission now to get people to talk to their unconscious in a way that is not negative so it's not getting confused 70 percent of the day which is how many negative thoughts we have 70 percent of our thoughts are negative it's not getting confused 70 percent of the day so when we tell it what we want and we tell it positive with passion it just runs off and fetches it for us that, that's a lot of its workload gone. Now we want it the same the other way around. We want the unconscious to tell us with clarity what the issue is. And then we get to decide, instead of dropping hints that we don't get. You see, um, things like fibromyalgia is people overdoing things until the body shuts down. Oh, wow. It's a very natural thing. I, I've helped. I, I keep saying 600, but that was years ago. I've probably helped about 700 people recover from fibromyalgia. Now, I, I, get, I get a lot of attacks about that, that it's, a, uh, it's an illness you can't recover from, but it isn't. It's a natural occurrence of people overdoing things to the extreme until the body shuts them down rather than them dying. Wow. And all I do is I get them to agree to listen to their body and as soon as they get that agreement that they'll listen to the body i go back to the unconscious and say look if you carry on keeping them in pain how are they going to know when to stop if they've done too much one day how will they know to stop because if they're in an eight out of ten pain they'd have to get up to a nine before they knew to stop by which time it's already too late mm -hmm. so i want you to switch all the pain off and i want you to get them in a state of comfort because I don't even want discomfort in the body. I want these people now for the rest of their life to go into this state where they go through, oh, I'm getting uncomfortable now. Oh, I'm feeling a bit tired. Right, oh, it's starting to get a bit achy. Oh, it's a little bit painful. And at any point along that trail, they can stop. But if they stay in pain, how do they know to stop? They can't monitor themselves anymore. And it waits for them to give this agreement. Without the agreement, you can't get rid of it. With the agreement, it literally goes in the time that you're in treatment. It, it's, I, 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 just, I just love this so much. It's just... I can see it oozing out of you. You can, you can, the, yeah, the, yeah. the passion is really, it's, it's cultivated. You know what I really love is about is this communication and connection with ourselves. And I love the fact that 
we each have the innate ability to heal ourselves when we understand what the communication is. And I love your work because in essence, you're freeing up people to live their life. You're giving them a rebirthing of life because I, 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 in all honesty for Stephen, I cannot fathom being in constant pain for 30 years and in one conversation, it's gone. That's, that's a priceless experience upon so many levels. And you get to do that in your day-to-day -day life. And the beauty is I can teach this to anybody. And anybody can do this. It, it, it's, it's not, it doesn't, you don't have to have a therapeutic background or anything. All you have to have is a love of other people, a, a caring nature. That's all you need. And, and like I say, I've trained doctors and all sorts of people. They love it. Absolutely. Strangely, right. people with the most medical knowledge can't do it as well as those without mm. because the knowledge gets in the way um i i got uh, somebody in front of me and i got uh, training some people including a doctor and uh, a guy comes in and he's got a knee problem and he says something about his meniscus his meniscus is torn and uh, i'm just about to carry on and, and show these people how it works and the doctor whispers to me, he can't help him, Stephen. And I went, why? He said, because his meniscus is torn and, and they don't actually repair themselves. And I went, I can help him. He went, why are you so certain, Stephen? I said, because I don't know what a meniscus is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. It didn't matter to me. You see, if, if the guy's meniscus is torn... He can spend the rest of his life with a torn meniscus and the pain that says you've got a torn meniscus. Or he could just remember he's got some damage there and not need the pain. Wow. And, and that's all I do is I, I, I call it brain bargaining. Somebody comes along with a problem. They pass it to me or they try to. The moment they try and pass it to me, their brain goes, but I'm keeping them safe with this and it pulls it back again. And then you have a tug of war of trying to get it off them. Now, if you snatch it off them, it's like a child with a, uh, a blanket, you know, that they suck on all the time. You can't take it off them. Uh, and and the, uh, grown adults, no different. You can't take their safety blanket off them. So you have to give them logic that says, here's all the reasons you hold on to this. And, and they, they're not aware of those reasons. And as soon as you give it enough reasons, the unconscious gets to this level where it goes, I'm keeping you safe, I'm keeping you safe. And then you give them all the reasons it's not safe to keep it. And when it gets higher than that, it has to let go. Wow. There's no option but to let go. And, and it's just such a simple thing. And, and I have many days where I think, if this is that clever, how come I thought of it? <laughs> Because you're a complete genius. You know what? I really love what you said. I don't know what a meniscus is. I, listeners, that really got me. It got me thinking about is that it's within our own belief set and thinking that it has to show up like X. It has to mean this. We somewhat delete everything else. And sometimes not knowing about it is enough to release. And I love that you touched on that. Is that you didn't have that, how can I say, the negative mindset of it won't work because of this you had no framework around what that was anyway you didn't know what it was so you thought well my belief is that the body heals itself so if i have that belief i know it can figure it out i'm just looking for why they've still kept the pain because there must be some benefit in it the body doesn't do anything without a benefit in it or a perceived benefit so i'm looking for that perceived benefit and then seeing well that's not right that's not that doesn't protect you anymore that's not helpful to you we can throw it away. The, I, I mean, the most incredible thing I've ever seen, I, uh, I'll, I'll cut the story short, but a, a young lady came for pain removal and uh, she had quite a distorted body. I mean, she was literally twisted and locked up from the waist upwards, nothing moved. And um, I got her out of pain. She'd been in pain as far as I know from all her life and she's probably uh, late 30s, early 40s. Uh, she arrived in a in a she had to be carried from a car to uh, my consulting room and I got her out of pain and, and this didn't take very long and uh, husband and her are crying and I'm trying not to and uh, the husband said can you do anything with a posture and she was literally twisted up like this and I said can you move at all and she said oh yes and she just bent from the waist and went back 
that was her only movement. And um, so I said, um, my usual answer to anything is, can you help me with it? I go, let's see. But, because I don't know. I, I'm not doing it. I, I'm just helping. So um, I said, well, let's see. And uh, when I work with people, I just put my hand on the shoulder and I get them to close their eyes. There's no trance involved or anything. And, and this is all I said. I want your unconscious to bring you back into perfect balance and alignment as soon as it's safe and effective to do so. And I took my hand off and the husband's chatting to me and he said, will that work? And I said, I don't know. And he said, well, how soon will we know? And I said, could be now, could be in a few minutes, could be hours, could be weeks, it could be years, it might never happen. And while I'm telling him, this woman goes from here to lean forward and I thought, oh, she'll lean back. And she leant back and her hands dropped. Oh, my gosh. And her head starts moving and she's watching us. Now, the weird thing is, when people have a massive change in front of me, they don't notice it themselves. So she's now just looking normally at both of us. And he, I was answering this question and I sort of like stopped halfway through. So he's watching me. Why have you shut up now? And then he looks at her. So there's me and him looking at her like this. Right? <laughs> and then she goes, what are you two looking at? And then she went, oh, <laughs> my head moves. Now, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. No need to apologise. That's an amazing shift. <laughs> so I had about two days where I thought, I've seen a miracle. I've seen because I only made that up on the spot. I mean, literally, it took me as long in the time I told you. And uh, so I spent two days going, I think I have seen a miracle. And then it, I realised, and I'm going to ruin the effect now. All I'd done was, at some point in her life, she'd locked up in fear. Something had frightened her so much that she'd gone like, oh, my God. And she'd locked up in fear. And all I've done is make her relax. <laughs> all I've done is make her relax. <laughs> Your work is absolutely amazing. I, yeah. I had no idea that this was the depth that you actually went to with your clients. We had a lovely conversation, but listening to the logic behaves, because so my background's in computing, so I'm very logical and I love that she was locked in fear hence the, the position you this person was holding this pain because of that it's so logical that our body's actually using an essence of communication that takes us back to a time in order to protect us yeah. and i think it's so beautiful that it's not this has happened to me and it's hindering me it is protection but the minute you speak to the unconscious that i'm okay now i'm safe now i'm hearing now i'm listening i'm absorbing the teaching that you've come to teach me it's pretty much like a child right you wouldn't just say go away you know mommy mommy go away you've got to just answer yes. the child connect and say what is it sweetheart and the minute they feel fulfilled and heard and listened to they go off and play with their friends or whatever activity they were immersed oh, in cool. so, wow it's no, it's no different to you you fall over it really hurts your mum kisses your knee and it's better wow like the magic kiss you know it, because we think it will be and, and this is what i have i don't have any belief that it won't work yes <laughs> I like that. I love that. And I think, to be honest, that's a big part of it happening. I think yeah. it, it's you holding that safe space for it to do so creates that environment for them to also feel safe to first be vulnerable enough to share and go back into where it was anchored in the first place. But secondly, to allow themselves to experience the shift. I, I can't. I can't really put into words because I, I, in all honesty, I'm pretty much speechless. I'm even chewing on my words. Listeners, I, I really want you to get in, get to grips with what this is for you. And again, I love the fact that Stephen shared so many different variations. So there's asthmatics, there's people that have diseases, physical pain, um, emotional pain. But like he said, the brain doesn't decipher it like that all of it is registered in the brain as itself. So if we can get back to the root cause, and I want you to start thinking. So I know people that have migraines, they suffer with these things for long periods of time, anxieties, asthma attacks. So it's like, I wonder what these are actually communicating to you. And I wonder, listener, I really calls you to, to actually allow yourself to go there. I wonder how differently your life would be after a session with Stephen. 
I wonder what aspect of self you would then be able to bring to light as a result of addressing these things that could be of hindering you. Like Stephen said, 30 years, 50 years down the line. It's shocking. It is, and it seems so trivial when you actually find it. it it's mm. like, why have I screwed my life up for 40 years from now? Wow. You see, even something as simple as exaggerating a problem gives you an exaggerated response. Yeah? If, if, you, if you believe it's uh, pollen season and your eyes and nose are streaming and you expect it to be bad next year, just think about this. Everything that happens, these fluids, are to eject the pollen. So the more you think it's going to be a problem, the more fluid you'll have to eject the problem. Yeah. And I, I dealt with somebody once, and, and she had all sorts of problems. And, and yet again, it was in front of a group of students. And um, she was a doctor, and I dealt with uh, leukemia. Uh, fibromyalgia, arthritis in her hands, and hay fever in 50 minutes. And she came back in the room. Uh, we did find out uh, three months later that her blood count changed and it went better uh, from the leukemia. Um, but she came back in the room and she said, Stephen, I, um, I'm a bit concerned that you said you'd deal with the hay fever later, but it's gone. <laughs> And, uh, and you didn't even mention it. I said, well, no, because we mentioned it first and then we gave the unconscious chance to change everything it needed to change, it's done it anyway. It doesn't need me to remind it. So she said, but she said, Stephen, and she started tapping her cheeks. And she said, but I'm a doctor and I know that to get rid of the cyanide fluid, I've got to either sniff or swallow and I haven't done either. So where's this fluid gone? And, and I said, typical me, it's your snot, how do I know? <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, but after five minutes of doing that, she went, oh, my hands are straight now. Be because she'd arrived like that, literally crippled up there. But she didn't notice it until she, and one by bit by bit, she kept going, oh, that's changed. That, oh, I'm not in pain anywhere else either. So, so these are things that they're doing, but they're not aware of doing them in the same way that they're not aware of putting the issue in place. When the issue is gone, they're not really aware it's gone until it becomes obvious. Absolutely amazing. Stephen, I wonder if there's a, a final message, a departed message that you would like to leave with our listeners, because I'm just very eager to share, for you to share some information in terms of websites and how they can connect with you. So I wonder if you could leave a final message just to kind of sum up your mission, your message to the world, and then let people know how they can get in touch with you. Okay, so my mission is to get as many people on the planet out of pain as possible. And to do that, I can't do it all on my own, which is why I train other people to do it, because um, then they can continue long after I've gone. And it's, it's really to say to people, just trust in yourself and your unconscious, even though you don't think you've got any control of it. You are controlling it all the time with every thought you have, everything you say in your head, everything you say about yourself de derogatory. It, it just lowers your self-worth. Um, and I would suggest that people go to my website, which is oldpaintogo.com. See the number two in it. Um, but I would suggest then you put a forward slash and put academy. And I've got um, some things there that are free. And, and the first thing that you come to is there's three 10-minute um, videos on self-worth. Now, because I've found self-worth to be behind most people's problems, uh, that's free for you to have a look at. And, and I'm not joking when I say that I have people who have like a zero self-worth who have had a 10 just from watching the video. So, so go there and, and think your level of self-worth and then listen to the video and, and, and join in with it. And it will change your self-worth. And then uh, the second part of it is I've done things, some things on grief and things like that for people to listen to where you can change how you feel about the loss of someone, which might be very applicable at the moment, unfortunately. Mm. So uh, there's loads of stuff out there and there's loads of stuff people like me post. Um, you know, find them and, 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 and just help yourself because you, you don't come to somebody like me to be fixed. 
you know, I don't do the work. I just have an idea of, you, you see, you're always running a program that you installed at some point. It was installed to protect you. And now it's either being overprotected or it isn't needed anymore. And we just find that and help you go, I don't need this anymore. And the moment you go, I don't need it anymore, you lose the problem. Wow. It, my life is so simple. I, I, I can't explain how simple my life is. Wow. It, because I follow my own advice. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You're an embodiment of your brand. I love yeah, that. I, I don't have any issues I need to clear up or anything. I, I, you know, other people might think I have. <laughs> Well, you know, keep doing what you're doing and, and helping yeah. people to release their pain. I think it's absolutely remarkable. And like you said, um, listeners, you can go online to the website and forward slash for the academy for this and there's some actual resources that you can actually access for free as well. And yeah. keep an eye out for the two new products that Stephen's also bringing forward. And Stephen, I really thank you for connecting with me on this platform. I really hope the listeners have enjoyed it as much as I have because I have learned so much. I really have learned so much from you and I would definitely like to have some conversations about a few things that's going around my mind. So really okay. thank you. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Okay. And, and yeah, just thank you for being so open and very generous with the listeners and sharing what you had to share. Cause I know there's a lot of content and a lot of golden nuggets that people can take away. So thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you for this golden opportunity to get in front of other people so I can help them. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.